Hi, so a lot of people have been coming up to me at the theater bank asking if I can help them with an entry mode theater of blood so that they can finish their night at the theater quest. This is a pretty easy thing to do solo and it really shouldn't take you too long to figure out. So I'm just gonna make a quick little guide if you need some help on the basics. So you can take in very basic gear. I just have some void, a tent whip, bullet pipe with adamant darts, I have a rune crossbow for a specific part of the fight with some bolts. I have a Bandos Godsword for reducing boss's defense, but you can just use a dragon dagger or something like that. And I have a trident. I'm going to bring along the thrall book because there's not a particularly useful spell book otherwise to use. And this will just add a little bit more damage. I'm going to take a range pod in super combat couple brews, couple restores, and then just a bunch of anglerfish. You're going to want to go to the board, make a party, and set the mode to entry mode. Once you go in, the first boss is going to be Maiden. She attacks with Mage as an attack where she throws out blood splats that you don't want to stand in, and she summons some little crabs that heal her. Overall, really simple. Just go in, make your boost, boost potion, put on your BGS or any other weapon. Just resolve its spec. Stand here and hit her. Every time she spins, try to move out of the way. That'll help you avoid her blood attack. These are the little guys she spawns. Bigger scales, you kind of got to worry about them more, but in entry mode, you can just hit them. There's another one. This is the blood attack she throws. If you're moving around when she spins, you won't get hit by it, but if you stand in it, it'll bring your prayer and HP. Spawn these little guys that will walk around the room, forming a trail that does the exact same thing. So just try to hit her while avoiding standing in any of that. Lot of crap. Spawn at 70%, 50%, and 30%. If you don't kill it, it'll boost your damage by a little bit, boost the blood splat damage by a little bit, and heal her a bit. But it's not too much, so don't be too worried about if it goes in. A lot of these spawns show up, and just run to the other side of the boss. Next room is Bloat. It's an undead monster. Walks around a central tank in the room and has a few core mechanics. If you're within line of sight of him, the shoot flies at you, which deals rapid damage, which is reduced if you're range praying. So if I go in line of sight of him here, shoot me with these flies. So all you got to do to avoid this is try to stay behind the tank. to walking. At some point he'll stop walking. When that happens, you just attack him. Stop walking, you're gonna attack him. If you have a BDS or something, you can use it here. Use the BGS specs if you want. After five or so hits, just run to the other side of the tank. Because it'll do this little stomp attack. If you get hit by that, it'll deal a lot of damage to you. In between phases, his feet are going to fall from the ceiling. Just gotta click on this next to this tank anywhere without a shadow falling. If you get hit by one of those shadows, it'll stun you in place, which makes it a lot easier for Bloat to catch up to you and start flying you. Once he goes down again, just repeat the same thing. You just sit here, just hit him. Maybe drink your boost pot again. If you're drained at all, once you die, 
guys. On to the next room. This chest will have bandages in it. Please heal your prayer. They boost your stats like a ranging potion, super combat, or an art. And they also give you a stamina pot. So you want to make sure you have a couple of these at least. This next room is the Nilocus room. It'll spawn white spiders which are attack with melee green spiders that attack with range and blue spiders that attack with mage in order to damage them you just have to hit them with the corresponding style i would recommend putting on your range gear and just sitting in this gear the majority of the room have your trident somewhere you can reach it your tent whip somewhere you can reach it and go in once you're in here you're just going to click any of the crabs that are green, so you can guess you have your blowpipe out. Just see a green crab, click green. If you run out of green crabs, put on your trident or your whip, it's something else. There'll be some that come to the middle of the room like this and attack you. Prioritize those first. Crab, hit with the trident. White crab, hit with a tent whip. And then back to hitting green crabs. Nothing to hit, just hit some other stuff. More range crabs, I'll go back to hitting those. Nothing to hit again, just hit some other stuff. You just use your trident instead of meleeing these things on the pillars, you won't have to worry about them exploding on you, because when they time out, they will explode. Another aggressive one, first. Aggressive one. It's really quick to find out if they're aggressive, they'll come to the middle of the room instead of the pillars and start hitting you. But overall, this room won't cause you too many problems if you just... Saying stuff, trident stuff, little pipe stuff, tent loop stuff. Anything that's nearby, or if it's aggressive. But the easiest way is definitely to stand in the middle with your blowpipe and your trident. For aggressive ones, if you hit the crab with the wrong style, it won't let you hit it again. So now I accidentally tent whip this. If I try to blowpipe it, it's immune. So you're just going to have to ignore that crab until it dies on its own. Put on my trident. Get some stuff nearby. Blue one. Some more range ones. Some aggressive ones in the middle. Worry about those first. You can use your overheads. It's not going to matter too much in entry mode. It's worth trying, I guess, if they're a big one and you have low stats. But otherwise, the entry mode crab should not do too much damage to you. Especially if you're standing here in the middle to avoid them exploding on you. In a bigger scale, you might have to worry about the pillars dying on you. But in the solo entry mode, you can pretty much just stand in the middle the whole time. The pillars shouldn't die on you. Nothing to hit. Hit some blue guys. When the big ones explode, killing them, they'll spawn two little ones. Not particularly important to know. Green ones. Kill some blue ones. You don't really need to have a loose prey on. You don't need to be using your prayer up. But you can eat the bandages, that'll give you prayer points and stam. That when you start getting low on fun energy or prayer or health. Another aggressive one in the middle. Bunch of green ones. Put on the blowpipe, start shooting them. Another 
aggressive one. I don't realistically need to do a switch. You can just put on the whip. We'll play for the try. If you do notice a pillar that's starting to get a little bit low, you can worry about the crabs on it a bit more. So since this pillar is starting to get low, as soon as I finish dealing with these aggressive ones in the middle, I will pay a little bit more attention to what goes over to this one. I'm not going to worry too much about running and meleeing the crabs on the pillar though, as they will explode if I'm standing near them, and that can deal a lot of damage. So I'll just worry more about the range ones and the mage ones, since I can stay in the middle here. happen to gnaw yourself on an aggressive one, you're not going to be able to hit it anymore, right? So you're going to have to deal with it sitting here and beating you up. Actually, yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if they changed that for entry mode. So just pray against it. At some point it'll time out and attack you, blow up. Deal a little bit of damage, but not too much. Eventually you'll get to the end where the waves stop coming out. If none of your pillars are low, you could just stand here in the middle till everything explodes. It only takes 30 seconds for the crab to explode. If you want to save some time, finish off the last couple ones in the room. So that's all done. Put on your melee gear, your spec weapon. Need a bandage or a combat potion for some boosts. The boss is going to follow the same type of deal. White is melee. Very melee against it. Hit it with melee. When it changes colors, change your overhead and then your weapon. Once again, you can just still have a one way weapon switch. You can full switch if you want. It's not going to matter too much. Light and play. Prioritize the overhead over the switch. The boss is going to hit you a lot if you don't. Change. Age. Which color it switches to is random, so just be ready to switch to whatever. room is soda seg. This room can be a bit tricky for beginners, but it's fairly similar to Maiden in the sense of you're just going to stand there and hit it. So once again, put your combat potion, put on your spec weapon, whether it's DDS, claws, BGS, hammer, anything's good. Run in with mage prey, put your specs. And when you're in melee range here, you're just going to put on your melee prey. Accidentally drank a bruise so super combat. We'll use this melee attack on you that gets reduced a lot if you're on prayer. When you get into the maze, it says Soda Seg is choosing you. You just have to follow this red path. Once you get past this third row of tiles, it's going to spawn this tornado that follows you. If this tornado hits you, it'll deal a lot of damage. Go back to the start. As long as you're full health, honestly don't have to worry about it too much. But if you want to be safe, all you have to do is stay ahead of it. So just run the maze a bit fast. In addition to melee, you can shoot out these orbs. If it's black, it's in range. You have to pray range against it. And if it's red, it's mage. So you can mage against it. 
You get hit by one without your overhead on. It'll damage you. Prevent you from turning on your overhead for a few ticks. Nothing too tragic. So you can just sit here. And you carry on. Pay attention for which one is coming at you. Absorb. Carry on. Back to melee. Every once in a while, he'll shoot out this big ball. If that hits you, it'll deal like 20 damage. Just be above that health, you'll be fine. For the maze, let me just eat up really quick to show you because it does a lot of damage. If you stand on one of the wrong tiles, it'll hit you every tick for 16 or 17 or damage. So just try to avoid doing that. Stay on the maze. Just make sure you're at the end of each row before you start running. As soon as you do get there, you should run so the tornado doesn't catch up. The maze does a little bit of damage to you just for being in the shadow realm. It's this little white tornado. It'll hit you for ones, twos, and threes. So just don't let yourself go below that health and you won't die. Just gonna eat the full because might as well be extra safe. Pay attention to the orbs still while you're eating. I'll summon a ball because it's about to do this the whole way. That would just help me. Just for me. Once again, pretty simple boss. Enter the chest, just buy all the bandages. If you don't have all the room, drop ranging potion, super combat potion, because these are essentially the same thing. That is the last chest before Verzik, so just buy as many as you can. This is Zarpus. Zarpus has three phases. He has one that spawns these little things. They heal the boss. Just stand on them and it won't heal the boss. He can't hurt you during this part, so don't worry about that. After a while spawning these, they'll wake up, start shooting little acid splats. Prayer doesn't do anything against these. So you just use your boost prayer, either eagle eye or rigor. You're going to just shoot him while moving around. Need a bandage for the range levels. You're just going to shoot him. When you see some acid flying through the air, you're going to move two tiles. Keep shooting. If the acid lands on you, it'll poison you, deal damage every tick, that you're standing in it. So just try to not let that happen by moving out of the way. If you have a defense reducing weapon, like BGS, that'll help you a lot here. I'm just not going to use it right now for example purposes, but he has a lot of range defense. So it'll take a lot longer with that one. Once again, I'm just going to keep shooting him maybe three or four times before I move out of the way. Moving two tiles at a time. I'm just gonna make a path all the way around the room. Zarpus gets down to around 20% of this health bar. He'll screech and enter the third phase. I guess it's more like 25%. So during this phase, just stop shooting him, put your melee gear on, and run to the middle rows. 
is going to face a corner. So, for example, this corner is facing this corner. It's facing this corner. If you attack him while he's facing your corner, it will reflect damage. It's a lot of damage. But all you got to do is just attack him while he's not facing your corner. You want to be super safe, just hit him once. Wait till it turns again. Once. You can easily squeeze in two hits though. The last room is Verzik. Make sure you pick up the staff. The first part of Verzik incredibly easy. So this first part, you're going to put on the staff. You're going to turn on the special attack, be on long range. Put on your mage prayer. And once you start the boss, you're going to spec her twice. And then you're going to stand behind this pillar. Spec her twice. Now I'm going to stand behind this pillar. You can obviously get more hits in, but... If you're really new, you might as well just do this. You see her shoot an orb through the air. If you're standing behind the pillar, it'll hit the pillar. If you're standing out here, it will hit you. If you're praying mage, it won't do that much damage, but if you're not praying mage, it'll do a lot. So I, when I see it flying through the air, the pillar, I just click her, hit her twice, and I go back behind the pillar. You regen enough spec, so you need 35 spec, just launch it again. Pillar. When the pillar dies, if she knocks off the throne, the pillars will die and deal damage if you're near them, so just run away when she falls down. So this part, you're going to pray range. She throws these little turnips through the air. These land on your head, it'll deal damage. But if you're praying range, it'll deal a lot less. She also throw this little lightning attack every once in a while, but don't worry too much about that. She summons these little crabs, they're going to run at you and explode. When it gets near you, just run away. She'll also summon this purple crab alongside. This you just need to hit with a poison weapon like a tentwood. And it'll die and deal some damage to the boss. If you need to eat food, make sure you move around when you do it so the ring ropes don't fall on your head. Once you're confident enough with that, all you gotta do is listen for this creep noise that she makes every time she's on the ground. Turn on your sound effects if you don't have those on. And when you hear it, you're gonna click her, and then click backwards diagonally. Another one of these crabs is gonna get near me, and we're on away. Get the purple guy. Backwards. If you go diagonally after every time, you won't have to worry about the orb landing on your head. If you don't use this timing and you're next to her, she has a melee attack. She'll bounce you away and stun you, and you'll be forced to tank one of these range orbs. Once she reaches 35%, she will summon these two red dudes. You need to turn on Mage Prey. If you hit her while she's in this praise, it'll heal her. So you need to hit these red guys. She'll still be able to throw her range attack, so make sure you're moving around. Since you won't be Range Prey, it'll heal a lot more if it hits you in the head. The same thing. Freak Noise, back and move away. Freak Noise, back and move away. Repeat that till phase 3. Phase 3 has a mage and a range attack, as well as a melee attack. If she lights up blue, it's a mage attack. If she doesn't light up blue, it's a range attack. As long as the prayer is on when it hits you, you'll take significantly reduced damage. Easiest way to avoid the melee attack. So your attack, hit her once, and then run away until she attacks her, or run under her. She'll spawn one of these exploding crabs partway through. Be aware of it. She 
attacked, I run away. I attack once, run under. She attacks, I quit, I run away. Just repeat this one to one thing. She stands in the middle and starts spawning these webs. You just have to run around the room. This is what the crossbow is for. You can put it on long range to try to avoid being dragged. You can shoot her, just run around the room. If you get stuck in one of these webs, it will prevent you from moving. And when it pops, it'll deal a bunch of damage. So if you get stuck, you should just eat a lot. That part finishes, put your melee gear back on, go back to trading one hit to one hit with it. Try and just switch the prayers accordingly. This next part is this thing. You can't attack it here again. It'll spawn a little yellow pool on the ground. You just have to stand on this till the green ball falls on your head. And once again, attack. Either run away or stand under till she attacks. The next attack she's going to throw, that's a special, it's going to be a big green ball. It's going to deal 20 damage. It's this green ball, so I'm just going to eat food. It's going to hit me in the head. This is what happens if you're standing near her and not away from her when she does those attacks. She has a chance to do a melee. Let's see if she does it again. This melee can't be prayed against and it does a lot of damage. It's pretty accurate, actually. So just try to keep doing this one for one trading. There's another exploding crab. When it gets near me, away. If you want to hit the crab with the corresponding style, like in the Nilocast room, you can do that to kill it. When she's below 20% health, she's going to spawn this tornado. If you get hit by this tornado, it'll deal half of your health and heal her for a big amount. In addition to this, her attack speed will also increase by a lot. But you can still keep trading one hit to one hit with her. If you have a spec weapon like Dragon Claws or Dragon Dagger, I would recommend using it at this part just to get through. If you have a Bando's God Sword, don't use it because defense reduction doesn't work against her. It actually buffs her. Otherwise, just sit here, hit here, and run away. Hit her, away. If you have the yellow and the tornado at the same time, just stand on the yellow thing, tank the tornado. It'll be okay. Back to trading one to one hit with her. While trying to avoid the tornado, you kind of just run in this diagonal pattern. Green ball, I'm just going to eat some food, make sure I'm healthy, until she attacks again. One attack, run away. Attack, run away. And just keep doing this. You get a ruby bolt spec during that webs portion. A significant amount of her health, it'll be a much shorter fight. But in the end, that's realistically the only hard part of the whole thing. Might take you a couple tries. I think you can die a few times in entry mode and it'll just let you reset the room rather than the entire raid. Once you finish it, you have this chest room. Loot. That should give you an entry mode KC that lets you finish Night at the Theater Quest. Um, I forgot to summon the Thrall again. If you do that during the music, it'll help you a lot because it can't get hit by the range orbs, or get bounced, or meleeed, or any of that. But otherwise, overall, entry mode's pretty simple. If you are struggling, bring in more brews, or sharks, or anglers. Bring in a different spec weapon, try it out. But overall, most of the bosses, it's really just stand there and hit it. Use the correct overhead. Get low, eat food. Overall, pretty simple. I hope this helps. Some people finish their night at the theater quest. I know there's not really any entry mode tob guides out there. There's just some normal mode tob stuff that's a little bit outdated. 
and requires you to learn a lot more mechanics since the main mode is a lot more punishing compared to entry mode. So hopefully this helped.